All right, for everyone joining in, we're just going to get started in just a minute. We're just going to give everyone a little bit of a chance to get logged in and we'll get going. Thanks. All right, looks like attendance is leveled out here. Uh, I want to say thank you for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate you being here. Uh, I'll say good morning to uh, those of you that were able to join us live today. And I'll just say uh, hi to everyone else who's uh, joining us uh, in the days, weeks, and, and months after this is recorded. So uh, thanks for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. I want to thank our, our hosts for being here. We'll, we'll get to them in just, just a moment. Just want to go through a few, few housekeeping things. Um, this is a virtual career exploration program. Uh, and the point of all this is, is exploration. It's, it's right there in the name. Um, it's likely that this program will hopefully give you one of, one of three outcomes. Uh, you're here to gain some more information. So uh, it might confirm that you're on the right track and this is a career that you wanna pursue. Uh, it may uh, provide you with some information, but lead you to believe that you might need to collect some more info before you can make a, a final decision or, and, um, and this is okay, actually all three of these are okay, but even if today makes you realize, okay, this isn't something I want to do, um, that's all right. You know, because we, you know, we certainly uh, we're here to help you make some make some decisions and collect some information. So that that's all. Any three of those outcomes are okay. Um, so why do we want to explore? Why do we want to do uh, look look into these types of things? Well, um, you know, we're not pro or anti college. We just want you to pursue what what uh, is going to make you happy. So, uh, but just a, just a couple of quick uh, statistics. Average student changes their majors three times. Uh, if they go to college, 80% uh, of college students are gonna change their major at least once. And the average cost of attending college in 2020, this is, this is in Pennsylvania, was uh, just under $29,000. So um, a lot of times changing your majors, if you're not sure what you wanna do, changing majors is gonna delay your graduation. It's usually gonna make, um, make you have to spend more money and uh, it'll delay you actually getting into your full-time career to start, start making some money. So uh, we want you to hopefully try and explore now and uh, make the best decision possible so you're kinda, you kind of know what you're getting into uh, with whatever you may pursue afterwards. We have about 30 different programs that we offer uh, that we're gonna offer this year. Uh, some of the ones in red have already occurred, so you could view those on demand at any time. And uh, we really thank all the, uh, all the hosts that came in and uh, were willing to host these virtual programs this year. Uh, we look forward to hopefully being on site at some of their locations uh, this, this next coming school year. So uh, just, um, just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, again, thank you to, I'll introduce Samantha and JT here in just a moment, uh, but this, this is sort of a, a dual co-hosted event from Thaddeus Stevens and York Water Company. So, a uh, big thank you to them for taking the time to put together today's program and, and speak with all of you. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly uh, at any time, you don't have to wait for a specific time to have any questions. You can feel free to submit them at any point that you want and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll hop in and, and ask those questions for you uh, at an appropriate time. So if you do have any questions, and again, we encourage you, you to ask as many as you can, um, you can use, there's a Q&A button there, and I kind of have it highlighted and circled there at the bottom of the screen. Um, please use that, and then that'll help me track who's asking questions, and uh, I can make sure I'm answering them the right, in the right way. Uh, please don't use the chat function, because that's a little bit harder. Uh, if that fills up, I might miss a question. I, I certainly don't want don't to ignore anyone's uh, questions that they're asking. So please use the Q&A function, and then uh, I'll be able to monitor that better. Um, and that is just about it. Um, if for some reason, I know some of you may need to uh, leave partway through to get to your next class session. If you're not able to finish it, uh, the email link that you got to get into this live session today, you can just click on that and you can uh, then view the on-demand recording and just fast forward to the parts that you missed and we'll go from there. All right, with that, I'm going to stop my screen and I'm gonna pass it off to our hosts. So and I'll, I'll just gonna, I'm gonna go on mute and I'll help monitor uh, Q&A as it comes in, thanks.
right, as JT is getting set up, I will introduce myself. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Weitzel, and I am a college recruiter with Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. Um, so later in our presentation, I will talk about our college. And what's really cool, the reason we partner with the York Water Company is because if you love what JT has to say, you can then uh, come to Thaddeus Stevens and get your associate's degree in water environment technology and then JT would love to hire you. Um, so it looks like JT's ready. So I am going to hand it over to you. Great, thanks so much, Samantha. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can't uh, get started right here from the beginning of my slideshow here. So hopefully uh, my first slide is up there and I'd like to welcome everybody to this morning session. Kevin, I love, the, I love the purpose of this morning. I love the idea that this is all about exploration and really getting an appreciation for, for the availability of possibility within another industry. So I really wanna to talk to everyone this morning about, about that exploration and what is the possibility specifically within the water, the wastewater, the utility and the environmental side of what happening, what's happening around us each and every day. I do hope that those that are joining us live today do ask questions. If you can ask the questions, I will do the best I possibly can to respond and give you, give you the answer to your question. Um, if you don't ask questions, the presentation gets a little bit more boring on my side. Um, so uh, ask the questions, please. I want to satisfy your curiosity through today. The other part is that I want to welcome you that if I pique your curiosity at all and you want to learn a little bit more about what it is that I do, what it is that the York Water Company does, and why what we do is important, reach out to me. Reach out to me, JT Hand, the York Water Company, and I'll be happy to give you a personal tour of our facilities when the time allows. I'm sorry that we have to do this in a virtual session. It's not the best form for this. It's difficult to really appreciate the physical nature of what we do in a virtual environment, but it's no less important to inform and to educate in this virtual environment while we have to deal with these restrictions. So what I really wanna to do today is I really want to share this exploration with all of you. And I'm gonna I'm going to tell a lot of stories today. I'm gonna to tell a lot of stories today because I, I hope that it's a good a vehicle through which to inform and to educate. And the stories are really gonna be founded around we, the York Water Company, and who we are and what we do and why we think what we do is so important to each and every one of you and to the communities that we serve. So the photo that you see up in front of you there, it looks, looks like a pretty old picture there, you know, of the York Water Company. Those individuals who are labeled numbers one through five there, they are you in 1816. They are the initial explorers into the water industry in our community. They were the original investors in this idea of a public water supply. And what could a public water supply do for a community. So just like you have questions about the value of this program and what we do, they too had questions back in 1816. Whoa, 1816, how long ago was that? Well, that's the year that the York Water Company was founded. So 205 years ago, we were founded. There were only 18 states back in 1816. Uh, as far as transportation goes, yep, you moved as fast as a horse could carry you. If you were fortunate enough to have a horse, railroads, telegraph, yeah, this thing called the internet, nope, not yet invented. All pumps to move water and waste water, well, all by hand. Any movement of any fluid had to be done by hand back then. Putting fires out with buckets, you've all heard of the bucket brigades. 1816 was also known as the year without a summer because a volcano, which happened in Europe, cast a huge pall across the United States and we did not have a lot of sunlight. That's the year that Napoleon was banished from France and James Madison was our president. So I want you to think about what was going on in 1816 and the transition, the transfer of technology from 1816 until present. And I want you to put that in your head 
as you're thinking about where we will be as a society 205 years from now and what your investment today could yield 205 years from now. That's what we looked like when we first built our first dam, our first reservoir back in uh, early 1912. That's exactly the technology that was used in 1912. This is a story today about public health. It's about the intervention of water supply as a key component of public health for the communities that we serve. You all know the importance of water. Water is life sustaining. You cannot go for a long time without having water. So if, you, if water is life sustaining and we all need it, who is it that's going to be able to invest in that who's going to be able to develop that, who's going to be able to create the sustainability of that to make sure it's available for all of us in the future. Well, back in 1816 and then again in 1912 and for the last 205 years, it's been the professional utility providers from the York Water Company who have been able to do this for our communities. And it all started with that curiosity and that exploration of what was possible. That's what it looks like today. That's what it looks like in 2021, impoundment of 1.1 billion gallons of water that supplies 200,000 people every day when they wake up to be able to brush their teeth, to be able to flush their toilets, to be able to take their showers. That's what the infrastructure looks like today to be able to take care of the water needs of the 51 communities that the York Water Company serves. And why is that important? Why is that important to you and to your families? Well, we take care of all of this so that you don't have to. I want you to think about the developing world and believe it or not, even in 2021, as we're all dealing with this global pandemic, think about the developing world and what they have to do to get their hands on potable water. Think about the investment of time and labor that they have to extract in order to get access to potable water. We don't have to do that in the United States. We don't have to do that in York, Pennsylvania, because we have taken care of that for you. We are truly benefited in this community by access to a supply of drinking water, which is safe, reliable, and sustainable. Not so in the developing world. Think about humanity, think about civilization. So humans have been around for about 250,000 years, give or take. And for that 250,000 years, for about the first 245,500 years, in other words, up until about 500 years ago, how did humans get access to their water supply? Well, they did it as you see pictured in the top left corner there, they literally went to a creek, they went to a watering hole, they went wherever water was, they bent down, they scooped it up and they ingested it. 245,000 years, they, 245,000 years they had to do that before we brought along, you know, kind of modern conventions. How have we had to react? Well, with growing populations, we have realized that access to uh, drinking water became a little bit more difficult. Industrialization in the United States um, uh, led to contamination of drinking water supplies and we had to adapt. We had to improve our technologies. We had to improve our treatment. We had to improve our availability and we had to improve our quantities. That's York, Pennsylvania, downtown Continental Square, late 1800s. You can notice the kind of the, the, the concentration of people. How did people get rid of their wastewater back in the early 1900s? What did people do with their bed pots? What did people do with the human waste that was generated within each of these properties? Did they flush their toilet? No. Did they go to the outhouse? No. That's why they had chamber pots. They would take the chamber pot, they would open the window and they would dump it out the window. So think about why several of these windows are streaked. They're streaked from not only the coal dust, 
which rose, but also streaks from that which was discarded out the windows. Obviously, that is not a situation that we want in our communities today. It's no longer allowed. You can't do that. It's illegal to do that. There are better controls over it. But it really only started, this idea of public sanitation really only started in this community 100 years ago, not that long ago. What was our solution? Hey, bring water to the people. How did we do it? We brought water to the people through wooden water logs. And we extended water pipes in these wooden water logs to the residents of Yorktown, which is as it was called back in 1816. We were initially formed not for a drinking water supply. We were initially formed for a firefighting need, which was occurring in the community. Go back in your heads to 1816. What was everything built from in 1816? It was all timber. It was all stick built. There was not a lot of masonry. If there was masonry, it's because you were a very, very wealthy individual. Other than that, it was all stick built. And what would happen to stick built construction in the early 1800s and through the mid 1800s? It would burn. So they created this water supply initially to fight fires. In our first years, we distributed water from the vicinity of where Penn State York is currently, Bummies Woods, where we had a spring and we brought water into the community and we distributed that in wooden pipes out to the residents of our community. Right there in the middle of the slide, you can see the crossroads of York, which is Continental Square. And in the center of Continental Square was the county courthouse. Just last year, when we were doing a project in downtown York and we were excavating just, just north of where that county courthouse would have been, we found one of our original wooden water mains. And so we excav excavated out and we pulled out of the ground a piece of log, wooden water main that had been put in the ground in 1816. Pretty amazing stuff right here in York, Pennsylvania. So why is it important that we're investing in the kind of the water and the wastewater utilities? Why is it important that we're exploring this? Oh boy, uh, we're all living through it right now, right? We're living through this pandemic right now. So if you go back to the early 1900s, yes, there was the, pan the uh, Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, but before the pandemic of 1918, our community was dealing with cholera and typhoid. Those were the illnesses and they killed a lot of people in our community. And we didn't know why. We didn't know why people were dying, uh, dying of typhoid and cholera in the early 1900s, late 1800s and 1900s. We didn't recognize the connection between water and that which you ingest and waste that which you discard. We didn't recognize that you can contaminate your own drinking water supply. We didn't understand what the purpose was of disinfection because it had not yet been invented. It hadn't been invented until a gentleman by the name of John Snow in London, England, at this very pump, discovered that those that drank out of this public water supply, this public pump, were more prone to getting sick than others. Nobody knew why until John Snow put the connection together with safe water, meaning water is not contaminated. Unfortunately, it took about 50 years before we solved it and a lot of death because we never actually resolved how we can disinfect the supply. Around the same time, the York Water Company was constructing its first major pumping facilities to expand our distribution system, to push water out to more people, safe, reliable, accessible water. It takes utility professionals to be able to do that. It takes people with imagination and innovation to be able to do that. Our first pumping station was constructed on the banks of the Cadoras Creek, right outside of the city of York, where uh, the city of York is right now. But what happened was, as we had constructed our pumping station outside of the city of York, another large manufacturer, Gladfelter down in Spring Grove. Not sure if anybody's on the line today from Spring Grove or not, but Gladfelter constructed their facility in 1864. 
the largest paper mill in the world in 1864. Well, what happens when you're making a lot of paper? You have a lot of discharge. And that discharge affected downstream and York PA. So we had to move our pumping station. We relocated it to the south branch of the Cadoras Creek. And we used modern technology, this idea of a steam pump. We brought coal in and we generated steam and that steam drove our pumps, which improved and increased the capacity of our system. We built a first treatment plant. We built a treatment plant in 1890. We had people who were thinking to the future and said, how can we better supply this community, this growing community of York? How can we better supply it? Let's build a treatment plant at the top of the hill so we can take advantage of gravity. And at the time we thought that aeration, this big fountain that you see, we thought aeration was the solution to disinfection. Well, we found out that it's not. You can aerate, but that doesn't mean you're gonna kill the bacteria. It really wasn't until the introduction of chlorine that we realized that chlorine kills bacteria. And that is the solution to eliminating the bacteriological contamination within the drinking water supply. If you can see the slide that's in front of you right there, just, I mean, just a point of note, I've always felt this unbelievably amazing. And that is this tree and I'm pointing to it with my cursor right now. That tree right there is a red oak. So this photo was taken in the year 1892. That red oak is still standing today. And so if you go up to the York Water Company's treatment plant, you can see the oak tree still standing. And we estimate that it's 300 years old. Magnificent. Talks about the sustainability of our drinking water supply. And we reflect on time and that that tree is still standing. We like to say just as that tree is still standing, so too is the York Water Company still standing, although not yet for 300 years. That's what it looked like back in the early, in the early 1900s. That was the highest technology of the time in the early 1900s. How far have we advanced since then? I talked about why it's important what we do, why we need people to explore this industry, because there are tremendous opportunities in the industry to solve an awful lot of our current society's challenges. You all were around about a year ago, right? When, uh, when the, the coronavirus pandemic really first started. And what did, what did the experts say? What did the experts say to do? What was the guidance that they gave to us? They said, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands often, sing happy birthday to yourself. Wash your hands as long as you can sing happy birthday. Well, you know, believe it or not, we had the same experience a hundred years ago. We were trying to figure out how do we get rid of typhoid? Well, the solution to typhoid and cholera was clean, safe drinking water. One of the solutions to the coronavirus is obviously hygiene, separation, but also hygiene. It's amazing how these things come back again, isn't it? What will we be looking at in the year 2121 and what will be the issue of the day? Can you talk technical, you take a look at technology and what we, what tools we had available to us back in 1912 that everything was done by horse and mule and buggy and carriage. And you look at the technology that's available to each and every one of you today with this little device right here, the world at your fingertips and how are we gonna use technology to advance the water and the wastewater industries? That's what it looked like in 1912. Look at the farmland all the way around Lake Williams. Look at how much farmland there is. Where's Interstate 83? Uh, doesn't exist. There was no Interstate 83 in 1912 when we constructed this. One billion gallons of water in storage, preparing for the future needs of our community. And once that was constructed, 1912 constructed, by 1917, it had proved its worth. It had proved its worth that the drinking water supply was safe that we did not have to be concerned with bacteria and contamination. 
that it was second to none in the state of Pennsylvania because of the investment of those who were innovative at the time. A hundred years later, we're doing the same thing. I talked about innovation and the use of steam. Obviously, we don't use steam anymore. We don't have a coal trestle anymore. We now use electricity, but the transition from coal to diesel to electric, it requires people of purpose, people who want to get their hands dirty, to truly understand the inner workings of mechanical systems and how to apply mechanical systems to moving water. Think about this. How do you move 8.4 pounds per gallon of water and move 20 million gallons of water a day? The largest single producer in the entire county of any product is the York Water Company. 20 million gallons per day, 8.4 pounds per gallon, 160 million pounds of material that we move each and every day. And we're able to do it and get it to your homes, your businesses, your schools for less than a penny per gallon. How do we do it? It's innovation and it's exploration and trying to identify the efficiencies that are available, especially through the use of technology. But we need people who think about these things because people like me, we're of the past generation. I, you saw me struggle with just getting on the Zoom meeting today. I know how to hold this. I don't know how to use this. We need people who can appreciate using the technology and investing that in this space. Again, another shot of what, what a pump looked like in the late 1800s and what we were wedded to. Last time you saw a pump that was this size, it's been a long time, right? This is a 3 million gallon per day pump. Today's 3 million gallon per day pumps can fit within the size of an eight by eight tool shed and pump the same exact amount of water. That's what that same exact pump looks like today is taken out of service. It was relocated to the Industrial um, Museum of Pennsylvania and it was restored and it's back in operation today as an artifact within the Industrial Museum. Because it's important that we remember the past, we remember how we got where we are so we can reflect on the future. That's the past. What is the future going to look like? And what are people going to say 100 years from now when they look at our pumps today and they're like, that thing is huge. I can pump that much water out of a box this big. Who's going to be the one to get us to that level of technology is absolutely exciting to think about. Structure haven't changed very much. The shells of our buildings haven't changed very much. Constructed in 1890, it's still there. The shell is still there. It's just everything inside that's had to change and improve. Same thing with this, built in 1929, the shell is still there, but we've improved. The question for all of you is who's gonna take us and others into the third century of our service? Who, is going, who are going to be the innovators to truly take us into our third century of service? and really appreciate the opportunities available in the water and the wastewater industry. This idea of sustainability and appreciating the impact we're having on our environment. I am hoping that as spring is upon us this week that all of you are able to get outside and you're able to see what our investment has allowed within our community that because we are the original environmental stewards at the York Water Company, we consider ourselves the original environmental stewards. Sustainability of our natural resources and our water resources. Visit us at William H. Kane County Park. Go for a walk. Walk around the reservoirs. Think about the possibility. Get outside. That's kind of where we look like right now, right? So, you know, we've got our two reservoirs right there. We've got Lake Redmond and we've got Lake Williams. 2.4 billion gallons of water in storage. Is that going to be enough? Is 2.4 billion gallons of water in storage going to be enough for your generation? Who's thinking about that? 
Who is doing the planning to make sure that sufficient water resources are going to be available for your generation and the next generation? We need the utility professionals who are going to be able to think about that. Hey, JT, if I can interrupt, we, on that note, we do actually have a question that, that kind of pertains to, to that. So I'm going a little out of order here. But um, Claire, there's actually two Claire's that have questions. But Claire D is asking, uh, are you or your company at all concerned with the amount of pollution produced by mankind and it affecting your work in the future? Claire, we worry about it every single day. Absolutely. We worry about it every single day. And we look to you and your generation to help solve all of the woes of my generation, right? We, my generation was horrible environmental stewards. We're horrible environmental stewards. And you, if we're not careful, are gonna adopt the same methods. This idea that we live in a disposable society where we use one thing, we use it once and we throw it away. What happens when we do that? Claire, I think about water bottles and I don't know if anybody's ever seen this, but I understand you can go to a store and, and you can buy water in a bottle, like a plastic bottle, and they sell it in stores. I don't understand the purpose of it all. When you can get the same, you can get better water right out of your tap. But that disposable bottle that you just use once and throw it in the trash, that is pollution. And that is things that we have to be concerned about every day. So absolutely. Contaminants are a concern. I'm going to talk about one of those contaminants in a few minutes. Kevin, was there another question? Um, there was, and uh, this is actually, I think, more of a Samantha question, uh, but the, uh, the other Claire, Claire W., had asked, um, being able to get the degree they were talking about, would that be able to help me throughout a marine biology job? Um, yes, and I'll kind of touch on that once I talk about the college, but what's really cool is if you start your journey at Thaddeus Stevens, you're getting that hands-on, that skill set working with water, um, and then you get to transfer your credits on to a four-year college if you want to continue pursuing. A lot of times our students work in the field for a little bit, and then their employer will do tuition reimbursement. So great uh, question, Claire, and again, I'll get more into that when I start my end. And Claire, just so I don't forget to reinforce what Samantha just said, if you were to get an associate's degree from Thaddeus Stevens, and if you were to come work for the York Water Company, and if you wanted to pursue your bachelor's degree, we would pay 75% towards your degree completion as an employer who's trying to retain these employees. And I don't care if you get your degree in marine biology, environmental sociology, sustainability engineering you name it it's all about what's your passion and what you can do what can you do to bring into the company so it's a fantastic opportunity i did want to show that real quickly there's 1912 so that's what they were thinking about in 1912 and that's what it looks like today this idea of prevention pollution prevention and being able to sustain these natural resources it's a great question claire and we do think about it every single day that's our drinking water supply if we don't take care of it, who's going to take care of it? So next time you throw something in the trash or you drive by a storm drain and you see trash accumulated in the storm drain, think about that. Who's gonna take care of that if I don't take care of it? And when I say I, I don't mean me, I mean you. Who's gonna take care of it if you don't take care of it? I wanna go down to, I wanna, I want to advance to this right here, and I want to just talk about that right there in front of you. And Claire, to your to your point, what's it all about? It's it's all about that product right there. It's all about that 20 million gallons per day. It's all about making sure that we're investing today in a sustainable future, and it's about having the professionals who appreciate that, who appreciate the demand. I don't want to overlook the other side of the equation. Okay, when we talk about when we talk about you know water, water environmentalism, when we talk about sustainability, we talk about water, don't forget about wastewater. Don't forget about the backside. You get it? The backside of the equation. Do you ever think about it? Do you ever think about it? You know, what you know, you know, oh, where is it going? Who's gonna take care of that for me? Oh, I don't worry about it. It's like flush and forget, right? Well, no, 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 there are professionals. There are professionals who, who think about this all the time. 
Uh, and, and, and you can learn more about it through Thaddeus Stevens and through these programs and through entrepreneurship of, is there a better solution than what we're doing right now? I mean, back in the late 1800s, how did you get rid of human waste? You opened the window. You opened the window and you threw it out the window. In 2021, how do you get rid of human waste? Well, you flush it down the toilet, 1.6 gallons per flush. How do they do it in water deprived societies? How do you flush a toilet with 1.6 gallons of water when you don't have any water? They've come up with solutions. What solution are you gonna come up with? There's a plant right there. There's a typical wastewater treatment plant. You know, I tell you what, you know, our infrastructure in our community and our country is failing. We need people who appreciate reinvesting in that infrastructure. We need people who appreciate the challenges of today, availability of resources, and who can uh, uh, come up with creative solutions to those challenges. One such creative solution, and again, this is, you know, you talk about environmental stewardship and environmental technology. You know, why do we do everything we're doing? We all live in the Chesapeake Bay area, the region of the Chesapeake Bay, reducing the nutrients, reducing the pollution, reducing the sedimentation. We are all going to be held accountable for doing that. You talk about nitrogen and phosphorus loading, you're all gonna see and hear a lot more about that as you get older, as you become um, um, more informed about the, the, the environmental conditions all around you. How do we eliminate these loadings within our creeks, which ultimately flow to the Susquehanna, which ultimately flows to the Chesapeake Bay? We are going to bear the cost for doing all of that. One of the solutions that's very, very recent solution is taking human waste. Let's see, taking human waste and turning it into fertilizer. Well, who came up with that idea? It wasn't me. Taking human waste and turning it into fertilizer and then taking that fertilizer and putting it right back on farms. Being able to take the phosphorus out of human waste. Here's another classic idea. And, and you've, all, you've, you've seen this recently, single largest methane producer in the United States is who? Who is the single largest methane producer in the United States? You'd think it was human beings, right? You'd think mankind produced the most methane. Who is it actually? Cows. Cows produce more methane than humans. They're actually trying to find ways to capture, yes, to capture methane from cows. Well, we're doing it one better. We're capturing methane from the human waste stream and we're turning it into energy. We're pulling the gas out of the methane, out of human waste and turning it into energy. Those are the opportunities that are available as you really appreciate you know, the possibilities. Last thing, I wanna just very, very quickly talk about the economics of what we do. Look, you're all thinking about your futures. You're exploring the possibility. You're thinking about what is available to me. We talked about Thaddeus Stevens and the Associates Program and what they have, and Samantha is gonna go into some detail, but I want you to think about your future as you're looking at what you may want to do and the value that our industry brings. These are very, very good paying jobs. So we hired, uh, I think Samantha, I think it was three years ago, right? We hired our first Thaddeus Stevens graduate. So he graduated, graduated out of Thaddeus Stevens, came to work for the York Water Company, certified filter plant operator, got his license and starting salary for him is $26 an hour. So $26 an hour plus 75% tuition reimbursement. It's a great place to start. Why are we looking for these type of people? Why is it important? because the community needs it. You know, we don't think about the value of a water supply for things other than drinking, but do you think about the value for the manufacturing processes? Do you think about it for fire protection? Do you think about it for even just recreation and the fact that we have recreational uh, opportunities because of this investment? Back in 2015, there was a terrible fire out in the Hanover area 
Don't know if anybody's on the line from the Hanover area, but terrible fire at the Miller Chemical Plant. You know, really, really affected the drinking water supply in New Oxford. Took them out, took their drinking water supply down for 45 days because of the contamination of the drinking water supply. Who's going to be able to think about how we're going to prepare and prevent these types of things in the future? And then, of course, you've all been you've all been very, very well aware of lead in drinking water and things that are going on in Flint, Michigan, and how lead can affect early childhood development. Who's going to think about better treatment methodologies to be able to eliminate those risks? And then of course, holy cow, do we need water for our commercial enterprises? Absolutely. You must have that water supply. You've got to have access to waste treatment if we are going to grow the economy of the company. It is so important and it's so taken for granted because we all make it look easy, right? We make it look easy. And whether you're at school or you're at home and you turn on a tap or you flush a toilet, it's kind of magic, right? It just happens, but you don't realize how much effort it takes behind the scenes to be able to make that happen. That's what you look like today. That's the resource that we are trying to protect, that we are trying to sustain for your generation and for the next generation. And we really do need utility professionals who want to join us in this journey. It is about the sustainability of our natural resources. And it's materialized through utility professionals who focus on the, who, who look at the problems and create unique solutions. We had two more questions. Oh. Day one. Sorry, we did have two more questions come in. I, th I think they're both mostly for you, JT. Um, the one comes from Ivy. She said, do you plan on hiring or teaching the youth of York in your company to create interest in continuing to providing clean water, healthier environment for the community? So I, I think, I, I, I don't want to put words in her mouth here, but I, I think maybe she's asking if there's some sort of a community outreach person to talk to the youth about uh, being cleaner and, and, and healthier for the environment. Absolutely. So we do, we do. In, 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 um, in, in normal years, we do lots and lots of tours up at our water treatment plant. We bring students from second grade all the way up to seniors in high school. We walk them through our facilities. We bring them down to the uh, Cadores Creek, South Branch of the Cadores Creek. We show them around. We teach them a little bit about why it matters every day what we do. So yeah, those, those are available and, and we look forward to going back to a physical world where we can uh, continue with those tours. All right, and then another one uh, that came in is uh, asking about some of the jobs at York Water Company. Are there different kinds of jobs available within York Water Company or does everyone do a similar job? There, there, any, any, any passion that you have, we have a space for you at the York Water Company. So we recently hired a communications specialist. We hire customer service representatives. We hire obviously biologists, chemists, um, uh, those who want to work in the, in the field who are good mechanics, good, good with their hands. So mechanical folks, um, obviously we hire uh, people who are investing in business. Um, so it, 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 human resources management, uh, information technology. I, I've, I've said this before and Samantha, you, you may recall this. If I could find somebody who has a passion for technology, who understands the mechanics of a pump, who knows how to take a pump apart and put it back together again, who has some business savvy and who's able to communicate, they could join the York Water Company and a starting salary is $80,000 a year. So any of the teachers out there who have those capabilities and you're looking for a $80,000 a year job, come talk to me. Those are the people we're looking for. All options available. Um, this next one that came in, I'm trying how to. I'm trying to think how I want to word this because it's a little on the gross side. But um, <laughs> hey, hey, I live in the gross world every day. Okay. Well, um, would it be better to use the toilet instead of using trash cans for things? And I'm just going to paraphrase and say things like um, various human waste, like maybe like when someone gets sick, is it better to throw that away or can that be processed through the through the toilet and through the, through the water system? 
Anything that goes through your body should go down the toilet. Anything that goes through your body should go down the toilet. That does not mean that if you have not put it in your body yet, you should put it down the toilet. So for instance, pharmaceuticals, do not flush your pharmaceuticals. Tell your parents, don't flush your pharmaceuticals, you know, expired aspirin and those types of things. Put it in the trash. A personal hygiene products, don't flush them down the toilet. Just because it says that those wipes are disposable wipes that, you know, you get off the store shelves, they're not disposable down the toilet. Throw them in the trash. All right, and, and on that note, somewhat somewhat related, um, this last one here coming from Libby is, uh, what does York Water Company do to clean polluted items from the water and prevent pollution? Yeah, so um, so what we really, we focus on sediment. That's the biggest thing that we focus on. And we pull about 1,200 cubic yards of sediment out of the, out of the, uh, the, the creek every year, which reduces sedimentation in the creek and it improves water quality. As far as our treatment process goes, you know, rest assured that the, the water treatment, the filtration and treatment process does remove all of the contaminants, all of the pollutants before that water is distributed out to uh, our customers. All right, thanks. That, that's it for the Q&A for now. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm turning it over to Samantha. All right, so I have to tell you, this is the third year I've worked with JT, and every time I'm with him, I'm ready to quit my job and go into the water industry, like no lie. Um, until I started working at Thaddeus Stevens, I never considered water as a business, as a resource. I never even thought about how or why I'm getting clean water or that my wastewater, when I flush the toilet, is taken care of. So. I shouldn't have a favorite major because we have over 24 different associate degrees, but our water environment technology is one that I would definitely do a career change um, in a heartbeat. Um, so all of you listening, or maybe after listening to this presentation, you have some friends or cousins or even family members that you think would be good for this, spread the word. Um, maybe you thought what JT was saying was really exciting and you wanna explore it more. Um, but you don't know, like, what, what do I do? Am I good at it? Should I go for it? I have no experience. So the two number of things I talk about, I work with students all across York County and I'll go to a college fair or do a guidance visit. And then I'll be like, well, what do you like? Well, I kind of like science. I guess I'll go be a nurse or something, or I, I like biology, but I'm like, but what kind of job do you want when you graduate? So if you were anyone that you kind of like science, you really like science, you kind of like science, but you're not the best at it, or thinking about all those biology, chemistry um, courses at a four-year school is intimidating, that's okay. Because when you go into water environment technology, the science that you're learning is hands-on. Um, the math, sometimes you're sitting and you're like, wow, like I am awful at math. I'll be the first to say that was me. I thought I was bad at math, but I never had the opportunity to take my algebra classes and apply it to everyday life. Now that I use math in my everyday life, it makes so much more sense why I learned trigonometry. It made so more, sen more sense why I learned algebra because the science and the math classes that might intimidate you or you might actually love, you're using them in every day applied. Like you're using their hands and their real life problems that you're solving. And so science and math, obviously, as JT has said, goes hand in hand with the water industry. So with that said, give me a minute. I am actually going to pull up. Um, so here is our website. Um, feel free to explore this on your own. It's stevenscollege.edu. And basically I just went under our academics tab and our associate degrees. Once you're there, you'll see that every single major has their own website. But today we're focusing on our water and environment technology. And what I kind of wanted to give you an idea is if you were so excited and you wanna go work for JT, cause I know I do, how do I get started? What should I do? And I recommend starting at Thaddeus Stevens. So I'm just scrolling down here to the curriculum and I am gonna pull up what you would be doing. So before I even start talking about the classes, 
When you come to Thaddeus Stevens, we are unique in the fact that you start once a year. Every student, you start in August. You're in class from August to May, and there's only 25 of you in the class. So you really get to know each other, and you really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with our teachers, with our career center. We have advisory committees for every single major. So you're going to be have the opportunity to talk to people in all aspects of the water industry. Um, JT represents you know, drinking water. We have people that do wastewater. We have people do, that do quality control, um, the environmental side. So you get exposed to all of that with industry. Then what I love is from day one, you dive into your major and you spend four and a half hours in your major every single day. Um, so it's almost like block scheduling. So you're in your, I'm gonna say wet, your wet classes from 12 to 4.30 every single day. So you can see here, you are doing uh, drinking water, water resources and drinking water distribution. That's what you'll be focusing on your first semester at Thaddeus Stevens. Then on top of that, you take about two to three gen eds a semester. So you can see that you're taking an intermediate algebra class and an English composition. I know Claire asked this earlier, but those two gen eds is what you would be transferring over to any four year school in state or out of state if you do continue on in your education. We are accredited by the middle states. So what that means is basically like I said, your gen ed transferred to and from any college. We have a lot of non-traditional students that start somewhere else and they end up coming and finishing with us. Um, you can see semester two is when you get into wastewater collection, um, safety, health and security, um, administration rules and regulations. So semester two is very focused on that wastewater aspect. Um, again, um, as we go through semester three and four, that would be your sophomore year. You're um, doing industrial waste, uh, print reading, wastewater. And then um, when you get to semester four, that's when you're getting into more of the drinking water. Um, our program, honestly, it's very set up for drinking water and wastewater. Um, by you attending our school for the two years, that eliminates how long you actually have to work um, in the actual field in order to take tests. Um, JT kind of mentioned this, but there are a lot of tests that you have to take because we have to make sure that you know what you're doing because you're taking care of our water. So by committing to two years at Thaddeus Stevens, that eliminates some of the work time that you would initially need to do in the field if you didn't come to Thaddeus Stevens. Um, but this is what your curriculum looks like. Um, with our students, you will see that we have science, like your traditional science labs that you would see in like a high school classroom or college classroom. You do a lot of lab work. Uh, but Thaddeus Stevens, we are here um, in Lancaster and right down the road, like not even five minutes, we have, um, I'm having a, um, it's one of the big creeks and I'm having um, a brain fart of what it's called, but we use it for our drinking water and wastewater. So our students, it's so fun. They, I will see them hands-on, they'll have their big waiter boots and they're going down to the creek and they're getting water samples and they're hands-on and actually doing this stuff. It's not just all lecture and sitting in a classroom. Um, they go to wastewater facilities, they go to drinking water facilities to get that real hands-on experience. So that's one of the things that I love about our program, um, specifically for our water environment technology. Uh, just to give you some, I'm going to bring up another screen. This is my PowerPoint, so give me one moment. Um, just a little bit about Thaddeus Stevens. I'm going to go ahead and play my little PowerPoint. Um, we are depending, I know I have students from all over like um, York County listening right now, but depending where you're at, you could only be 30 to 45 minutes. Some of the people more, if you're like in Hanover listening or Spring Grove, it's closer to an hour commute, but we are located right off of Route 30 on the outskirts of Lancaster City. We have about 1300 students on campus and something unique, we only take PA residents. So you'll meet students from all across Pennsylvania <clears throat> so depending where you live, you might commute or you might live on campus. We do have dorms. Um, we have a dining hall and different things that you can live at. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And again, we have 24 different associate degrees. Um, today we're focusing on our water environment technology, but you can always reach out if something else catches your interest as well. Here is a list of all of our majors. Um, 
kind of intimidating to look at that huge list. So I break it down into three categories. So we have things in the building trades. So like carpentry, plumbing, residential modeling. We have things in manufacturing. So like electromechanical, uh, computer integrated machining, HVAC. And then we have things in our technical fields and that's where water environment technology falls under. But we also have things like um, graphic communications, business administration. So again, a lot to look at. So some things to remember, I kind of already mentioned this, but you're, an, you're a full-time student Monday through Friday. I tell students to block out their schedule eight to 4.30. You do have to come in full-time and you do have to come in with, in with your major. Um, and here's one of the reasons that I'm really passionate about our college is the price tag. So right now, student debt is a huge issue. Um, students on average across the country are graduating over $36,000 in debt, 36,000. And I feel like we're so conditioned that students are like, oh, 36, at least it's not 100,000, at least it's not 75,000. But that college debt really affects your life. My personal story, I graduated um, college about 10 years ago, kind of getting old, but I graduated $40,000 in debt. I'm 35. One, I didn't do research and I didn't ask myself um, how many jobs were going to be available in my field. So it took me a few years to find a full-time professional job and I still pay college loans. Actually, I'm so excited. I'm down to one, but at one point I was paying almost $500 every month. So that student debt really does affect your life. Um, and I know when you're in high school, you don't really think like that. So fast forward to the screen right here that I have up. Um, our tuition, so next year, our tuition is only $8,400. That's it. That's about 50% less than most technical schools or four-year schools in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, even when you look, if you would decide to live on campus, room and board to live in a dorm for the year is only $5,000. That is so affordable. Um, again, you would choose between a meal plan, you know, a five-day or seven-day, but we're not, um, the reason that we are affordable, we're the only technical school owned by the state of Pennsylvania and our mission is to give everyone no matter female male non-traditional traditional student a chance to pursue an education to change their life and have a better life so our cost is something that I am like again I could just talk about all day long but that eight thousand four hundred dollars is still a lot of money so um, we have something called the Stevens Grant. The Stevens Grant is absolutely life-changing. Over half of our students, so over 600 of our students qualify for this. Um, not sure what grade I have listening to me, but I'm sure you've heard the buzzword, the FAFSA. Um, the FAFSA is basically the financial aid form that you fill out through the government to see what you qualify for. Um, if you're a student that maybe you're on free and reduced lunch, maybe you don't have a lot of income coming in, gosh forbid, the COVID, maybe your parents lost out on work this year, whatever the reason, if there's not a lot of income coming in, that's a good indicator that you would qualify for our Stevens Grant. It's not a separate form, you fill out the FAFSA. If you qualify for something called the Pell Grant, you are going to be Stevens Grant eligible. And ladies and gentlemen, this Stevens Grant goes towards everything. Your textbooks and tools come at no cost. It goes towards your tuition, your housing, your meal plan. It significantly, I mean, dramatically reduces your cost. And in some cases, some students actually go for free. So this Stevens Grant, again, if you are someone or know someone that you know financial, like things are going to hold people back, the Stevens Grant could be a huge difference. But I also like to mention, if you're someone you're thinking, ah, my parents make too much money, I'm not getting that Stevens grant, that's okay. Tuition's affordable, we have scholarships. Um, we fill out one form and then we filter to see what you qualify for and there's other grants and loans that you can qualify um, or earn. So again, Thaddeus Stevens, our price tag is affordable. So I always like to bring that up. Um, I mentioned briefly, just real quick, we do have campus life, go Bulldogs. Um, I know we're known for football, but we have basketball, track, cross country. Um, we have the dorms, we have the traditional dining hall, but we also have cafes, they're called the Bulldog Cafes. Um, intramurals, I hear dodgeball gets pretty dicey. Um, we have student congress, yearbook. Um, so there's a lot you can get involved with. It's not just somewhere that you go to class and go home. So I know having that college experience is important. It was important to me when I was looking at colleges. So just know that you can have that. 
But what's the next step? Um, well, you're taking this time to go to school. You're paying some money to go to school. Well, you want a job. So overall, as a college, we have a 96% job placement rate. But let me tell you, in water and environment technology, it's more like eight to 10 job offers per student. Um, they are above. I mean, they're one of our top paying, top recruited industries right now. We just don't have enough people going into the water industry. The average age of our of people in the water industry, they're like in their 40s or 50s. And there's no one going in to replace these people. So we need you um, to do this. When I say you, all of you listening. And the other thing that I thought was so cool, and I'm sure JT can attest to this, but once someone goes into the water industry, they never leave. They're there for 30 to 40 years and they love it and they don't want to leave. So that says a lot when you go into an industry that you stay for that long. I mean, 30, 40 years, that's, I can't even imagine that. I'm only 35. So water is cool. But um, on average with our, all of our majors, it's a 96% job placement rate and 6.6 .6 jobs per student. And on average, our students are starting around 43,000. Um, but again, I can't say enough about the water industry. I mean, sometimes, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there can be bidding wars where someone, because they want our students so badly. So they'll get offered so much money and then the other water facility will come back and be like, no, we really want you. So here's some more time off and a little bit extra in your salary. So sometimes industries are fighting over our water students, which I think is cool. Again, we kind of talked about this, that you can transfer your credits. Um, we have direct agreements. Um, I know like Penn State, uh, mechanical engineering, you can start at Thaddeus Stevens and then everything transfers over to Penn State. Their um, um, engineering program is at Penn State Hershey. So we work closely with them or um, Her Penn State Harrisburg, I mean. So just really food for thought to think about that. So here's one of the number one things I want to tell you, whether you're a senior right now, there's still time to apply, so get on that, or if you're a junior or lower in high school, you need at least a 2.0 or higher GPA. Grades are important. When you come to Thaddeus Stevens, you're getting an actual associate's degree and we expect you to be at college level. So that 2.0 is really important, but go above and beyond, okay? Most of our students are anywhere between like a three or a 2.8 to a 3.2 on average GPA. So the higher, the better. Um, how you apply, this is especially for my seniors. There is still time, okay? So you fill out the application online. There is a $45 application fee and you can pay that right online. But if you're on free and reduced lunch, you can ask um, your guidance counselor to sign a fee waiver for you. And we need your high school transcript. So I love the US Post Office and they are going through a lot right now. They're a little on the slow side. So sometimes I used to be able to say five to seven business days, we'd get your transcript. It's a little longer. Um, so if at all possible, I would send that electronically, whether through email, fax it, do a file upload, but the quicker you can get us the high school transcript, the better. As long as you have that 2.0 or higher GPA, uh, you'll be reviewed and be able to take our entrance exam. But maybe you took the SATs, maybe you didn't, maybe COVID screwed that up. Don't worry, you don't have to take the SATs, but if you did, we'll take a look at your test scores because you could bypass our entrance exam. Our entrance exam is three sections, math, reading, and writing. For our water environment technology program, you wanna make sure you're at college level in algebra and arithmetic. Reading, you'll get like a prompt and then, or you'll read stuff and have to answer questions, almost like reading comprehension. And then writing, you'll get a prompt and then write an essay. You wanna take that seriously because again, there's only 25 spots per major. And I gotta tell you, Water environment technology is definitely getting popular because JT has been telling everyone how cool it is. Um, so you wanna take that seriously and give it your best shot. And again, your GPA. Those are the two things that we really look at. And we don't necessarily have a deadline. However, um, offers have been going out since the end of January. So you wanna get on that seniors or my juniors or lower classmen, I always say apply and take the entrance exam by the end of December because first wave of offers usually go out sometime in January. Um, so that's basically how you apply.
Um, the other oh, thing. Sorry, oh, Samantha. Sorry, go ahead. There was a question that came in that, that's pertained to something you mentioned. I, yes. My higher ed days kind of, I'm, I'm being brought back that when you talk about credit transfer, I believe the line typically is um, uh, the transference of credits is at the discretion of the receiving institution. Does that sound? That's yeah, fine. so not necessarily. So we are accredited by the middle states. So since we're accredited, that's what basically forces colleges to take our credits because we worked really hard to get that accreditation. So your gen eds will transfer over. Your actual core classes um, and your major might not, but your gen eds are aligned with the accreditations, whether it's Temple, Penn State, Millersville. Are there any colleges outside of Pennsylvania? Because that was the specific question was what all colleges are the credits able to transfer to? And is it only Pennsylvania college? Yeah, so the middle states is nationwide. So if you want to go to California University, they will accept your gen eds. So good question. Great. Um, again, so I feel like it's been such a unique year. I, if you're listening to this, I hope we convinced you that water is cool and that you want to go into our water, water and environment technology field, but don't be afraid to reach out to me. I will schedule a Zoom with you and your parents, whatever it takes. I just know this year has been hard on our seniors for career exploration, so ask me for help. I am here. Um, the other thing, follow through. Make sure that we actually received your transcript. Make sure, you know, that you took your entrance exam. And the other thing, Oh my goodness, make sure you pick an email address that you are going to check. That is so important. And I usually recommend using a personal email and not your school email because eventually you're gonna graduate and then that email goes away, okay? But check your email. Um, so that kind of uh, leads me to where I'm at. Um, and did any other questions come in? There was, there was a specific question about uh, transferring of credits to Duke University. I, I did quick look up. Duke is accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges. Well, that's a redundant. yeah. So anyway, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is good for wherever you want to go. So our um, if you go to our register page, and you um, you're going to want to talk to the register at Duke and say, here's the classes, here's the curriculum. Pull up the curriculum from Thaddeus Stevens and say, would you accept these? It's better to do that research before you commit, so that way you know what you're going into. But good question. But again, that specific, you you want to kind of reach out to both um, that register and you know with the classes that you'll be taking here at Thaddeus Stevens. I, I wanted to mention a couple of things at the at the start of the program. I said that the average um, cost of attendance, which is you know that that's tuition, room and board, sub supplies, everything, is is uh, in Pennsylvania is about twenty nine thousand dollars. So. Yours comes in even with room and board comes in at 18, which is amazing. And I, I do a sort of more expanded presentation for high schools when, when I'm asked to. Uh, <laughs> and uh, some things I didn't mention is that Pennsylvania is actually the third highest uh, graduate student loan debt in the country. So we're number three out of 50, only, only losing or winning, beating Vermont and Connecticut. So um, for some reason or another, Pennsylvania is in incredibly high when it comes to uh, graduate debt. So um, yeah, anything we can do to hopefully, again, that, that's sort of what, what drives a lot of what we do in career exploration is trying to, if you, if you do decide that your career requires that college route and that's what you want to do, you know, at least get out of there as quick as, as quick and, and expensive yeah. as possible. Yeah, that's why I know that's, that's why I love Thaddeus Stevens, their job placement and our affordability because is to have both of those and then have cool jobs and opportunities to go work for someone like JT and the York Water Company is just life-changing for you. Great. Well, thank you both. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything else to add. I'm not seeing anything in the Q&A and, &A and uh, we, we've, been, uh, we've been discussing this a little over an hour. So that, that's been great. A lot of great information. Um, Samantha, I, I was saying, Every time I hear JT talk, it's it's yeah I learned I learned something new also even even though uh, yeah I've I've heard this it just always always keeps my interest and um, for for those I, I don't think anyone even mentioned because I know he's not a big title person but um, JT is the CEO of York Water Company um, not a community I mean he's a community liaison but um, just to to have him um, be so active in the community and do things like this uh, I really appreciate it more and I, I hope my mentioning of that just makes you appreciate even more uh, how much he does to. Uh, go out of his way to, to discuss these types of things and, and the job. So uh, thank Thanks, you. Kevin. It, it, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to, to join everybody this morning. And, and uh, you know, it's all about inspiration, right? Is, you know, and, and how can we, uh, how can we all uh, contribute to, re to really the future of our communities? Yeah.
Absolutely. So with that said, thank you all. Uh, thanks, especially to those who were able to join us live. I know, I know your time uh, Your time is very valuable, especially if you're in school. Um, it's, it's difficult to pull, get pulled away from your classes, but uh, thank you so much for being here and really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, feel free. You can email uh, info at ycal.us and I can relay those to Samantha or to JT and we can go from there. So thank you all so much. Have a great day. Appreciate your time. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.